You're watching KCMI TV. Well, I'm glad you joined me today, and uh, I want to say thank you. Uh, so many of you take time out of the day to to watch our podcast, and um, I want to tell you how much I appreciate your time in spending with us to share the word of the Lord. I want to just talk with you something today that has been in my spirit, and I want to talk about being led by the Holy Spirit. Um, and I thought that um, a good scripture to start with would be Psalms 23, because there's, it's such a powerful uh, portion of verses. And of course, it's probably uh, one of the top two most quoted uh, chapters you know, in the book of Psalms. And in verse 1, it says this. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Boy, it just, it just simply says, if God is your shepherd, you're not going to be in want, that he's going to meet your needs. And, of course, he says, I will supply all of your need according to my riches and glory. Uh, verse 2, it says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And then he talks about, he said, He leadeth me beside still waters. And I really want to really delve into that today about being led by the Holy Ghost, being led by the Spirit. In verse 3, it says, He restoreth my soul. And then again, it says, He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This whole verse is, is talking about being uh, led by the Holy Spirit. In, in verse 4, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Think about this for a minute now. We're in a valley where the shadow of death is, and if you go back to Bible times, it's really referring to there were places where robbers would hang out and um, people, when they went through those areas, they were very dangerous and you could be killed. And they would call it that in the valley of the shadow of death because there was just a death lurking there. It says, yea, though I walk through the, through the valley of the shadow of death. Well, how did you get there? Well, the preceding verse says that God is leading us. So it means that sometimes the Lord is going to lead you into places where it looks like you can die. He leads me. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Some of you are in such precarious places right now in your life, in such difficult places, and you know, I look back over the years and places that, that I was walking and I knew I was with the Lord and, and you think, God, are, are you with me? Do you even know where I'm at? Can I tell you that? Um, even though you feel like you're so close to death, this verse says this, he's with me. Sometimes God is quiet and... Uh, He's not very forceful, and yet you don't realize it, but he's right there walking alongside of you. And he said, if you can understand that, he said, you won't fear the evil. Um, verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And when I read that, I'd never seen it this way, but think about this. If you are following Christ... All right? He's leading you. And so you're following Christ. Then this verse says, then there's something else that's going to follow you. Goodness and mercy shall follow you because you're following the Lord. And so he's on that path. And so when, when you go back to um, Isaiah Chapter 55 and verse 8, uh, he makes a statement. He's, the Lord says, your ways are not my ways. Or your paths, the road that you take, the direction that, that you think would be a good direction. The Lord said, those aren't my ways. 
And oh, how many times have we decided we're going to take our own direction? And what you don't realize is when you start following your own path, number one, you look behind you, goodness and mercy are not following you because they're hanging out with the Lord. And you, you wind up getting in a precarious place and a dangerous place, and God ain't with you because he said, your ways are not my ways. And, and the word ways here literally means... Um, just the final destination or it literally means the journey. And God said, uh, you know, one verse says this, there is a way that seemeth right unto man. Remember that verse? It says there is a way, there is a path that, that you and I in our natural ways, we look at that and we go, that, that's the way I need to go. He said, but the end thereof is death. Um, I, I want to give you a definition um, Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse 14, the Lord is talking about his way, and he said, Narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. And I looked up the word narrow, and there's a whole bunch of definitions, and, and really none of them are going to make you shout. <laughs> Uh, one means to suffer, another one means tribulation, another one means to be pressed like a grape, another talks about affliction. And so the Lord says, the path that leads to life is the difficult path. He said, it involves affliction, it involves some tribulation, it involves to where you're pressed. Paul talked about this. He said, I'm pressed out of measure. And when, when you get on that road, see, that's why the Lord said, your ways aren't my ways, is because we want to pick the way that has the least resistance. Whatever is the easiest, that's the way we want. But that's not the way God does it. And he said this. He said, narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And, and he also talks about, he said that um, the other way that it leads unto destruction and that there are many that are on that road, but in this one he said, the path that leads to life, he said, few there be that find it. Because our natural propensity is when we look at obstacles, we interpret them as saying, take a detour. And God's saying, no, I need you to overcome this. So God will put, he will lead you in a path that is tailor-made to your weaknesses and to your strengths. And he will say, this is the way that you need to go. Um, Paul said this, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. As, as a pastor, I feel a tremendous responsibility that my own personal life needs to be clean because my church people believe in me. And so they're going to, they're going to, you know, they're going to yield to what I tell them or the direction that I say. If I'm not following Christ, then I can lead them off into a path of destruction. And Paul said this, he said, only follow me as I follow Christ. He said, because if I'm following Christ and then you follow me, he said, you're going to be all right. Um, and this verse is quoted in a couple places in the Bible. And I thought about it. I woke up uh, with this on my heart this morning. And Jesus said, if any man will come after me, or he's going to follow, he wants to follow me. He said, there are some prerequisites that need to take place. He said, the first thing that has to happen is you have to look at self and you have to say no. He said, let him deny himself. Did you know that the devil is not your greatest enemy? You know who's your greatest enemy? Self. It's us. It's our natural desires, our natural inclinations 
that want to lead us off the path. So the Lord said, if any man wants to be my disciple and they want to come after me, he said, the first thing you have to do is you have to deny yourself. And he, then he says, the next thing he says, take up your cross and oh my, this is, see, this is what's lacking in the church today is we don't talk about the cross anymore. You know, when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified and he's so weak from the ordeal that he's been through, the being beaten and all of those things, and he's carrying his cross and he collapses under it, they had to force somebody. The Bible says they compelled Simon of Cyrene took over. Nobody was standing in line going, oh, let me carry that cross. Everybody wants to carry the gold. Nobody wants to carry the cross. And the Lord said this. He said, you just can't come in and say, okay, I'm your disciple and I'm going to follow you. The Lord said, there's no way you'll be able to follow me until you deny self. Because he said, self is never going to follow Christ. He said, self, you have to deny it. You have to crucify. That's why Paul said, I die daily. And this, this is the, the same words used here. He said, let him deny himself, take up his cross. And this is a powerful word, daily. This is why so many Christians don't follow Christ, and then they can't figure out, how did I get where I'm at? How did I get so messed up? How am I so confused in my life? It's because... You have to follow Christ daily. You never know when God's going to move. Remember in the Old Testament, the scripture says that Israel was led at night by a pillar of fire and in the daytime by a, a cloud. And when, when you read the account here, it said they never knew when God was going to move. The cloud could stay there. If it was daytime, it might stay there for three hours, and then it started moving. They had to pack up everything, and it wasn't an easy ordeal to follow the cloud. Or the cloud might stay still. The pillar of fire might stay still for a month. And then all of a sudden, you know, they, they've, set in, they've settled in, you know, perhaps they're going to build a, start a garden or whatever. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God just moves. The Bible says the Spirit moves as it listeth, or it has its own inclination. And so, uh, in the scripture here, the Lord is, he's saying, he's saying, you have to take up your cross daily. Because you never, God can change direction on you. And then he said, then you follow me. It's not easy following the Lord until you allow yourself uh, to, to shift over into the spirit. And um, Joshua, he was telling them, he said, we've not been this way before. And right now, I believe that many of us and many of you that, I, that I'm sharing the word with today, you've not been where you're at right now. This, this is new territory for a lot of us. I mean, we've come out of the coronavirus. We've seen churches falling to the right and to the left. We've seen ministries fail. We've seen our nation in upheaval. Life is not normal. Nothing seems to be going back the way it used to be. We've watched all kinds of political thievery and and you know, right is wrong, wrong is right, and men are women, women are now men. It's just, it's very confusing. We've not been this way before. And so we need the Holy Spirit to guide us. You need the Holy Spirit to guide you every day. The only way that can happen is you make a decision. I'm following the Lord. I don't care where it takes me. We used to sing a song, Where He Leads, I Will Follow. And uh, in the Old Testament, let me, let me qualify this first by saying some of you are, are walking on a path that you've never been before because later on you're going to have to lead other people on that path and you need to know what's ahead. And a wonderful example of this is Moses. From the age of 40 to the age of 80, he lived in the wilderness 
not knowing that one day he would come back there and lead a nation where he had learned to follow the Lord. Many of you are going through times in your life, the Bible says we are made overcomers by the word of our testimony. Uh, and a lot of you that listen to my preaching and, and teaching, you know this. Most of what I teach you is because it's where I've been. I've learned to walk in affliction. Many of you have learned to walk in tribulation. But can I tell you that eventually you come out of it and God lets you live beside the still waters. My final thought is this. The Bible says this in John 16 that the spirit of the Lord or the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. When you follow the Lord, and that, and I hope I'm articulating this, you cannot lead your own life and then say, I'm following Christ. There are no two guides in this relationship. It's either you're in charge or he's in charge. You have to let him, you have to tell the Lord, okay, I'm throwing away my direction and I'm gonna follow you. And it says if the spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. When you make that decision that you tell the Lord, you're in control, it doesn't matter where you go, I'm going. That's what Ruth says. She said, wherever you go, I'm going. And that's what God's after. And, and I, I think a lot of us have reached that point where um, I don't want to suffer. You know, I don't want to be in difficult places. But I can tell you this, I'd rather live in the valley with Jesus than to live on the mountaintop without him. Because if he's with me and he's with you, we are going to be all right. I want to encourage you. God wants to lead you. And sometimes it will just scare the daylights out of you where the Lord tells you you need to go. Do it anyway. Because you will come out on the other side victorious. I love you. Um, I do love you. I, I can feel God just pouring into you. You be strong, and I'll see you next week. For more information about Kent Christmas Ministries International or Regeneration Nashville, go to kentchristmas.org or regenerationnashville.org. And for the latest updates or videos, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. God bless you.